Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. New video just into our newsroom showing smoke billowing from the north side of the Somerset collection. And we're going to start there on Local 4 News at 6 with breaking news from Troy. A fire at the Somerset collection along Big Beaver Road. Mara McDonald just arrived on the scene. Mara, what can you tell us? Karen, take a look behind me. You can see the ladder truck stretching onto the roof here of Somerset North. They are over the Capitol Grill, and the latest information that we're getting is from the mall itself, which, confir which confirms there was a fire at the Capitol Grill restaurant today. Uh, they had to evacuate the restaurant, but that the mall itself is open. Uh, no injuries reported at this point, but I want to show you what it looked like earlier today as people were driving down Big Beaver. There were huge clouds of black smoke billowing out of the top of the mall. People originally thought it was Macy's that was on fire. It's not. As most of you know who've been here, there are two restaurants in the middle of the mall, and the mall confirming for us right now that it is the Capitol Grill that had some sort of a kitchen fire today. They have evacuated the restaurant. The flames were billowing out of the top of the mall. You can see that ladder truck stretching up there right now, but they appear to have the fire at least somewhat under control. Uh, we are still waiting to talk to Troy Fire. I literally just jumped out of the truck. So as soon as I know more, we will come back to you live. We're live in Troy tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. You bet. All right, Mara, updates coming uh, throughout this next 30 minutes of news and, of course, a full update on Local 4 News at 11. Now let's move to Southeast Michigan, bracing for what could be the other big story of the night. Severe storms could be coming in behind the big weather system that you see on Storm Tracker 4 right now. Paul Gross tracking the chances for some very impactful weather. Paul. Yeah, and unfortunately, some of this is going to come in while we sleep. So right now, we're fairly quiet across the area. Things are uh, uh, doing okay here. We're actually, a very pleasant evening. Now, this batch of rain here is going to be moving eastward and stay mainly north of 8 Mile. In fact, mostly north of M59. But it is farther back to the west that we are watching uh, this. Now, this is a very severe storm went through Milwaukee. They had wind gusts between 50 and 60 miles per hour, and they had hail with it. And the expectations, I'll show you in the model in a minute, is that this area here is just going to continue to develop and then move eastward and then southeastward across our area. So here it is. Again, you see, here's that little tongue of moisture that we just talked about. That moves through and largely not impactful for the first part of the evening. What's going to be impactful is what comes in later. So you see as we get to 1 o'clock in the morning, this stuff's approaching our western suburbs, and you see dropping southeast. Best chance for severe weather is south of 8 Mile here during the overnight while we're sleeping, and then all this stuff's going to be gone by morning rush hour. I'll have a lot more on this coming up in just a few minutes. Don't forget the local forecasters app is really important to have on a night like this. Not only do you have real-time radar, but you also get instant notification of watches and warnings. If you have notifications turned on, it is the nation's best weather app because we designed it ourselves. And you can go to the App Store, search under WDIV, and it will take good care of you tonight, as we will here on Local 4. See you back here in a few minutes. Well, dramatic video tonight showing a tow truck losing control in oncoming traffic and then plowing, look at that, right, mm. into a business. Sean Lay, live with information on what started all of this and a closer look at the damage. Sean? Gunfire started all this. So many people could have been hurt. Thank goodness no one was. But look, the st this business here was a brand new front as they work on the inside. That truck you saw, the red one, we'll show you the video a lot here. It ran into this side of the business. You can see this whole area now is gone from this business. They'll have to rebuild. And gunshots coming from this direction led to all this. I thought the whole building was going down. A tow truck speeding the wrong way into oncoming traffic down Woodward Avenue just past 7 Mile. The driver of that white car trying to get out of the truck's way. There's a collision and watch again. That tow truck goes tumbling right into Hassan Fayed's building. We were just inside. We were just working on the building. The driver of that truck could have killed someone, but Fayed says the driver and female passenger were trying to save their own lives. They were being pursued and being shot at. That was my biggest fear is where's the bullets going to come from? That's all I heard is he's shooting at us and trying to help them, you know, break out from the towing truck because they're inside the building. The gunman was arrested. The people in this truck and people in the building are OK. When Fayad says he and his partners were working on the building, this is what he means. His office for his businesses is right upstairs. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were put into the building. And now this, a truck taking out the front of Fayed's building. The biggest thing is just deliver the message to everybody out here that nothing is worth it. Life is too short and this 
Today is a great example. Three people could have been dead and only God knows if we were inside. This new camera right here capturing that tow truck tumbling into this building, taking out these two fronts. And again, the people inside the tow truck, they're OK. No one was hurt inside the building. And three people now have been taken into custody, including the people in the tow truck. We're also hearing that a gun was recovered, a rifle. We're live in Detroit. Sean Lee, Local 4, back to you. Wow, what a scene. All right, thank you, Sean. Well, today marked day two of the January 6th hearings, and the committee laid out what it says is evidence of Donald Trump's plot to spread false information about having won the election. In pre-recorded testimony, James former Will Attorney Ray. General William Barr brought up Trump's claims of a, quote, Second. big vote dump that occurred here in Detroit. He said people saw boxes coming into the counting station at all hours of the morning and so forth, and I explained to him that I, I, at that point, I knew the exact number of precincts in Detroit. I think it was 630 something. I said, Mr. President, there are 630 precincts in Detroit. And unlike elsewhere in the state, they centralize the counting process. So they're not counted in each precinct. They're moved to counting stations. And so the normal process would involve boxes coming in at all different hours. So there's nothing. And I said, did anyone point out to you, did all the people complaining about it point out to you, you actually did better in Detroit than you did, you did last time? I mean, there's no indication of fraud in Detroit. As we have reported often, the committee's next hearing is scheduled for Wednesday morning at 10, and you can watch it live here on Local 4. Well, a major delay announced today in the Floyd Galloway trial. He's charged with murdering Danielle Stislicki. And the question, will key evidence be admitted in the case? I spent the day in court today listening to both sides fight for and against a tip that was given in the case, which actually led to the discovery of Danielle's keys and her Fitbit. The question, was that tip handled the right way? Floyd Galloway walked into court not knowing if evidence connected to an admission he reportedly made to the man who conducted his lie detector test would be admissible in court. The tip read, in quotes, the security guard did it. He drove the victim's car to the house in Berkeley, uh, from his house in Berkeley to her apartment, then walked to Tim Hortons at 10 in Halstead, where he called Shamrock Cab or something that sounds like Shamrock, uh, where he received a cab ride to within walking distance from his work where his car was parked. Galloway's defense told the judge that tip from Galloway's polygrapher was then told to the Troy police chief, Gary Mayer, who then called the Farmington Hills police chief, Chuck Nebus, and says that was actual privileged information. So in your mind, it was pretty important to determine the source of this tip. Yes. Knowing that Chief Nebus is the one who took the phone call, did you go back to Chief Nebus and say, hey, Chief, what else can you tell us about the caller? Yes. And what did he say? He said everything that's in the tip is what he knows. Galloway's defense attorney told the judge police failed to properly document the source of the tip and use that tip to obtain search warrants. It's our position that there has been a long-term and widespread campaign to keep information from the defense. Prosecution said nothing was obtained from those search warrants and police did their job in filling out all the necessary paperwork related to the case. But today's conflict caused a delay and now Galloway's murder trial has been moved to November 28th, which will be about six years since Danny went missing. Well, I talked to Danny's parents after court. They didn't feel like talking on camera, but they were devastated. There is another delay in this case. The next hearing about that tip and the evidence that was collected will be June 24th. I'm told whatever side loses is planning on appealing. Such a long, long time. A bipartisan group of senators has unveiled an agreement on gun safety legislation. Here's a look at what's in it and, as importantly, what's not. There is help for states in creating and implementing red flag laws aimed at keeping guns out of the hands of those who pose a threat to themselves or others. There's funding for mental health programs and an enhanced review process on certain weapons for buyers under the age of 21 via the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. Notably absent any sort of expanded background checks for all gun sales. There is also no assault weapons ban, nor any change in the minimum age at which one can purchase an assault style weapon. Priya Mann, live with a reaction from one of our senators and from everyday Metro Detroiters. Priya.
Hey, that's right, Devin. You know, we talked to a concerned dad as well as a grandfather who's owned guns his entire life. Both say this bill doesn't go far enough, but they said it's a step in the right direction. The school needs more security. This dad says he worries about his kids safety every day when they go off to school. I'm very concerned, not just dealing with the, the elements of the school building itself, we didn't want the elements of the children going to the school and what they're going through. A bipartisan deal on several gun safety measures includes funding for mental health and school security resources and help states implement red flag laws and enhance review processes for buyers under 21. I love guns. I've had two or three dozen in my lifetime, but I like to say I don't need an AR-15 to shoot a rabbit. A group of 20 senators, 10 Democrats and 10 Republicans announced the deal on Sunday. At least it's a step in the right direction. Let's face it, I just feel like the NRA dictates our gun policies. This whole Democrat and, and Republican thing is like a, a big, um, big fight between what side is right, what side is wrong, and now it's not about that. It's about what is right for the people. The bill does not include a ban on assault weapons or raise the minimum age of purchase. Would I like comprehensive background checks for uh, everyone purchasing uh, a weapon? Absolutely. No question about that. But right now, uh, I'm in a place where we have to figure out what is doable and what is meaningful. And this packages both of those things. My only disappointment is I would like to see more done with AR-15s. I think it's absolutely ridiculous to have our kids, including my grandsons, running around with AR-15s. They just don't need them. Now, this bipartisan proposal ensures that it would make it through the Senate filibuster. But as they say, the devil is in the details. And Senator Stabenow says they are currently writing the legislation as we speak. Of course, we'll continue to follow its progress in Washington. Reporting live tonight, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Sure will. All right, Priya. Still ahead, a former priest in Macomb County is convicted of sexually abusing two children. And we continue to follow the breaking news out of Troy. A fire at the Somerset Collection. A live look now from Big Beaver and Coolidge, where crews are working to get that fire under control. Apparently started at the Capitol Grill, which, as you may know, is a restaurant right in the middle of the mall on the north side. No one was hurt in the fire. Some areas of the mall are closed right now. Crews are investigating the cause. We'll bring you updates throughout the night on ClickOnDetroit.com. We'll be right back.